Val Violet here, second generation homeschooling mom of three. I have a seven year old, a five year old, and an infant. Today I wanted to share with you the science curriculum that we're using. So let's get into it. So this building foundations of scientific understanding I've chosen for my seven year old. We've been doing it since first grade. This is volume one in the series. There are three volumes. And if you do all three volumes, it's all the science you need for K through eighth grade. We actually opted to condense this first volume into just two years. So we're doing it in first grade and second grade instead of stretching it out over three years. And in the front of this book, he talks about um, those two different options. If you want to start in kindergarten, you're going to go through the very beginning lessons much more slowly. If you condense it to two years, you just go through them at a more normal pace. So let's take a look at the table of contents. The first part is all about how you teach this program, all that information you'll need to read before you start doing the program. It's a lot to take in, so I recommend setting aside a couple of different times to read all of that. You can see it's eight orientations. And then it has, the science program has all four basic strands of science and they're all woven together. So over the course of the year, your child is doing a bunch of different kinds of science and this program really helps draw connections between all the different branches of science. And it's one of the things I really, really love about this program. So the four strands are nature of matter, life science, physical science, engineering and technology, and then earth and space science. Here's the flow chart that he gives you to show you how all the lessons are connected. And theoretically, you use this flow chart to plan the order of lessons yourself. You could, one of the ways he suggests doing it is starting with one and just going across and then doing two. And then perhaps if there's a lesson that's really closely connected, you would do that one next. Um, or you can go down until you reach a lesson that has prerequisites and jump over. I found both of those options confusing, especially when I was first starting out. So if you go to the Building Foundations of Scientific Understanding Facebook page, there are so many resources to help you do this program in their Facebook page. Um, but one of the things they have is this schedule. And this is, if you're going to do this in two years, it tells you the order. Um, and they give you, they email you, the people who run the Facebook page are the author of this book and then the author of a simplified companion book for this that I opted on to purchase. But the schedule is from the companion book and she emails it to you for free when you join the Facebook group. Um, so I used that schedule because that made a lot more sense to my brain. Uh, but the way the lessons are set up for that schedule, it depends upon you being in the Northern Hemisphere. So like it has plant stuff in the spring months like March. So if you're somewhere else, you'll need to adjust that. Um, and then one of the other things that somebody has put on the Facebook group is a complete book list that lists all the books that are mentioned in the lessons. So I printed that out as well. So I have my little packet for planning. Each week I can look at what lesson we're doing and then I can flip to find the books and put them on hold at the library. Um, and that's just a little bit easier for me than getting this out every every time to do that part of the planning when I'm putting it into our weekly schedule. Just wanted to show you quickly one of the orientation units is this baloney detection kit and so it's a critical thinking and how to bring that into your science lessons. So this module or this orientation in particular I thought was really really interesting and really helpful. All right so let's look at one of how one of the lessons is laid out. This is lesson A9 so it's towards the end of the lesson progression in this book. So we just did this lesson uh, fairly recently. So every lesson has an overview section to tell you what's going on in the lesson. It gives you um, an estimate of time required. These estimates are for classrooms, so it takes me and my daughter significantly less time <laughs> to do it than this. We do not spend 45 to 60 minutes doing the activity and then discussing. We spend like maybe 20 minutes. And then it has practices, things that your student hopefully will be able to do when this lesson is over. The required background are the prereqs. You have to have done these, those, these listed lessons first before you go to this lesson. Materials for the different things that you'll be doing in this lesson, the different demonstrations. This book mostly has demonstrations at this age as opposed to experiments. So with a demonstration, you're doing a hands-on activity that's supposed to show some particular scientific concept as opposed to an experiment where you have a hypo hypothesis and you're testing. I personally think that at this age, when kids are still developing their foundational scientific skills, you really need hands-on demonstrations. They aren't ready yet for the experimental part because they don't have all the background knowledge they need to develop experiments. That being said, there are a few lessons in here where it gently guides them to design 
their own experiment. For example, one of the air lessons, uh, he, he asks, he guides you to ask the students, how would you design an experiment to prove that air weighs something? And then it has suggested questions for guiding the students through that. And then you do the demonstration together and it's all laid out. So teachable moment is how you can bring this science lesson into your daily life um, or something that you can use to sort of start off this lesson. You could, especially if you're a little bit less structured and you want this a science lesson to feel more organic, you can start with this teachable moment and then go from there. So the way that I always plan this lesson is I, these lessons is I read through them and then I highlight the important um, pieces for me. So observations that the students need to make, experiments that we're doing, and then I always highlight the questions. And sometimes I'll read them word for word, sometimes I just glance at them and paraphrase. I know some people type up their own separate notes, and actually in the Facebook group there's notes that people have typed up and slideshows and things like that, but it works best for me to just go off of the text like this. So you can see I've highlighted all over. This lesson has several parts, and so depending upon how long each part is, usually you'll do one part as one day. So we do science twice a week. So this lesson A9 would take us one to two weeks because it has three parts. I think we spent two weeks doing it. And then at the end, it has discussion question or discussion questions over here to talk about with your student to make sure they've grasped everything at the end as a wrap up. And then also some different like notebooking or um, kind of review activities or additional expanded experiments like growing crystals for this one, or they could do science notebook. We usually always do the science notebook, which for my daughter, I don't require a ton for her. For example, here's her notebook page from when we studied life cycles. She drew, she looked up in our science encyclopedia an animal that she was interested in and then drew their life cycle. I really do think that this science is foundationally important for kids, but I don't require a whole ton of output from my daughter as written work right now because this is a very discussion focused program and so we just mostly do it as discussion and then I'll have her do a little bit of notebooking a lot of the time she just draws pictures and then describes the picture to me and then this parents and others providing support this talks about ways to continue mixing continue bringing this lesson into activities that you do all of the time and then here are correlated reading books. I usually put a few of these on hold to the library and we'll work them into our lunchtime reading throughout the week. So that is a sample lesson. All the lessons are laid out the same way. Um, some other things that you may need if you're going to do this science for this year, I ordered almost all the supplies I already had on hand, but I didn't have rock kits. So I ordered these um, minerals, rocks, Oh, let's, let's go back to the minerals because I don't think I should do the top. There's the minerals, and then this last one is fossils. These were not very expensive, and the samples are pretty big, so I thought that would be cool for the rocks unit or the rock lessons that we're doing. We also bring in Magic School Bus episodes. I have both the original series and then the new series, both seasons. We don't have any subscription services. So if I want something like this, I have to buy it on DVD. So I got this one on eBay. I'm not sure if it's still, I'm not sure if they're still making the DVDs for the original series, but these two, they're still making the DVDs. I'll try to link them in the description box below. So each week we usually watch one, two, sometimes three, depending upon what we're studying, episodes of this uh, to kind of reinforce what we're learning and just make it a little bit more fun because my daughter really enjoys that. So we've really, really been enjoying this science curriculum. I find that my daughter's retention is very good. At the beginning of most lessons, they he has you um, kind of remember what you've done before. He cues you to recall what you've taught in previous lessons. And my daughter can always remember what we've gone over before. So I've really been enjoying this curriculum. I think it's set up really well. And I love that we don't just focus on one thing each year. I know some kids would love to spend a whole year talking about astronomy or a whole year doing biology. But for, for my daughter, mixing all the strands together definitely works a lot better. So I hope you found this helpful. I'll try to link everything in the description box below. I am an Amazon affiliate, so any Amazon links, if you click on them and make a purchase, I do receive a small commission. Thanks for watching.